Again, just as additional reminders, we've got the project due March 1st. We've got notebook checks due Friday, and we're going to have part one of our, our first unit quiz on Friday. Tomorrow is going to be review day, and part two of the quizzes are going to be on Monday. So keep that in mind. Be ready to go and answer. Again, I may go a little fast. So if I do, please take pictures as we go along. Get those written down um, when class ends because I do try to give you guys a lot of extra time uh, as I go fast through the lessons online. Okay, for number one, what is the main ingredient for forming thunderstorms? I'm going to give you guys online 10 seconds to answer any of the following questions through the chat. Um, otherwise, I'll help you out. And I'll have Angel help me out as well up here for in-person students. And then number two, what pressure systems are A above and B below a hurricane? And then three, what are rip currents and red tide? Angel, did you maybe know number one, what's going to fuel a hurricane the most? That is perfect. That is exactly right. Great job. Number one, it's going to be warm ocean water and warm air. Warm ocean water and warm air. Okay. Um, number two, anyone have an answer for that potentially? Looks like somebody else joined us. Hold on one second. Up oh, Yorkies. Okay. Okay. Um, so number two talks about what's above and below. And I think we haven't talked about that much. I'm just going to help, help you out and give it to you. Uh, if you see in the chart on the right, you can clear. And number three, guys, we're going to answer number three through some videos. So no need to say just write videos. We're going to answer here in a little bit together. Um, Above the hurricane, you have high pressure. That's why when you look at a hurricane from space, it's like a very flat donut, very flat in structure. The pressure pushes down on it, keeps it dry and cool. But once you go below that hurricane, it's actually the opposite. It's going to be low pressure. And that's where we get all the rain, all the, uh, the lightning and thunderstorms. Okay. Um, keep in mind, what's the worst part of a hurricane? The eye wall is the worst part. The eye is going to be nice and clear. And we're going to see, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to see um, a video of a plane flying through the eye of a hurricane. Pretty cool stuff later today. All right, let's go to move on to number three. Uh, skip that because it's already number three. Let's take a look at, uh, for rip currents, what again, uh, we need to know these, right? What are they and why are they bad? Angel, did you happen to know by chance about rip currents and why they're bad? Okay, so when you go to the beach, and the water pulls you out to sea, we call that a rip current. But before I expand more on that, let's go ahead and watch a video that explains that further for us. Again, this is, uh, pay close attention guys, because this is um, information that could potentially save our lives or save a family member or friend's life, right? Again, how to escape, how to escape a rip current, because a lot of us go to the beach and it can be affected by the water and the ocean. Currents kill dozens of people every year. In Florida alone, over the last 25 years, more people have died because of rip currents than hurricanes and tornadoes combined. So let's take a look at the science behind rip currents. Every second of the day, every day of the year, you have wave action, and that wave action is bringing water to the shore. Once it gets there, it has to go somewhere, so it spreads out. And then you begin to see how that breaking wave action creates a circulation in the water. Now eventually, circulation increases speed of the receding waves, and so that water is getting pulled out faster and faster, and that is the rip current. It's counterintuitive, but it's so important to remember. If you get caught in a- So when you're in the water and a current's pulling you out and you can't swim back, that's called a rip current. Let's see more of this. How do we get out of this? This is a big problem. Again, causes more people to, uh, causes more fatalities in our state than tornadoes and hurricanes combined a year. Rip current, the best advice is to swim parallel to the shore. There we go. You let the current take you out, catch your breath, be able to find that calmer water, you swim parallel, and then you find your way back to the shore. Of course, always great advice is to swim at a beach that is guarded. That is a look at the science behind rip currents. Okay, so if you're ever in a rip current, you do not, again, make sure to, uh, oh, one second. Make sure to write this all out, guys. This is for number three in the Go Blue. Make sure to write this down. You do not want to swim back against the current, okay? you won't be able to swim back. You need to swim sideways. You need to swim parallel 
calmly swim parallel until you are out and then swim back. But don't swim against the current because it, it, you'll, you'll get exhausted and you could drown. It's going to take you further and further. So calmly, lightly swim around. Don't panic. Um, you could get exhausted and tire yourself out doing that. Okay. Again, you must swim horizontally. could cause drowning. And this is a current that's going to just kind of move vertically out from the beach. Narrow, strong current that flows out and away from the beach. So that's the first part of... Um, that is the, that's part one of question number three that we need to know. Rip currents, rip currents. Okay. So I'll give you guys a moment as soon as my, I take a picture, but I'm going to wait till uh, my in-person students are ready. So the next topic we need to cover for question number three is called red tides. Again, let's go blue for a while, guys. So for red tides, um, Angel, did you happen to know anything about red tides or anyone in the chat you can add if you know anything about, about red tides? No, not sure. All right, so red tide, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make the water red. Uh, and if there's a red tide, does anyone know what creature might be affected a lot by that? Any ideas? Fish. A lot of fish end up dying um, from red tide. Let's find out the specifics on that for the last part of number three for this Go Blue. Check it out. And this video is based out of here in Florida. One second for the commercial. The usual number of dead animals have been washing up on Florida's shores this summer. The usual number of an unusual number of dead animals have been washing up on Florida's shores this summer. The cause of these terrible scenes? A toxic algal bloom known as red tide. Florida is no stranger to red tide. These harmful blooms typically show up on the state's coasts almost every year. A 1,700-foot device resembling a closed mesh net was dropped into Tampa Bay today, off St. Petersburg, Florida, in an attempt to keep millions of dead fish and other marine life from floating farther into the bay. They were killed by billions of microorganisms known as the red tide. But this year is different. Usually, the wind and the current eventually break up the blooms. Now, though, the bloom has lasted about nine months and still going strong. Things are so serious that Florida Governor Rick Scott issued an executive order last month to combat the algae, urging local agencies to take emergency actions, including redirecting the flow of water to curb the growth of the blooms. Red tides occur when colonies of algae grow out of control while producing toxic or harmful effects on people and animals. The toxins that are killing the turtles and fish in Florida also make shellfish dangerous to eat, and they can make the surrounding air difficult to breathe. And true to their nickname, these harmful algae often turn the water red. Also, in rare cases, the blooms can cause human illnesses that may be debilitating or even fatal. Beyond the health of humans, harmful algal blooms can also hurt marine ecosystems. Even non-toxic algae contained in the blooms can have a negative effect because when masses of algae die, the decaying process can deplete oxygen in the water, killing animals in the area or forcing them to move elsewhere. It is difficult to combat these harmful blooms, but groups including the National Ocean Service have been working on it. Their goal is to learn how to detect and forecast the location of the blooms so they can provide advanced warnings, helping towns plan for effects that come with the dreaded red tide. All right, so what is causing red tide again? Algae blooming, right? And that's usually caused by fertilizer running off into the ocean. So for red tide, as predicted, it's going to hurt a lot of fish, hurt a lot of fish. Last thing for the Golu guys, last one, last thing we need to write here in yellow. So algal blooms make the ocean turn red and brown. This is going to poison the water for the fish. It's going to kill a lot of fish, make the water very acidic and not as not as like fresh or clean or blue. Um, and it's also bad for humans. Is it okay to probably eat the fish that have died from red tide? Angel, no, not at all. If you're swimming in this water, it's going to give you a really bad skin rash. Um, and it gets in your mouth or eyes. It's going to burn your eyes. It's going to burn your, your throat really bad in your mouth. Uh, so again, not good at all for humans. 
and that fish you cannot eat at all um, and bad for the uh, marine life. So again, that's another big issue that can happen sometimes in Florida that we need to get get a that we need to get situated and figured out. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the hurricane notes on page 23. I've just got two quick things I'm going to show you. We need to know the different hurricane stages and we need to know the hurricane diagram, like how it's set up. Uh, so feel free to draw that diagram the best you can. You can find them very easily online, maybe simpler versions of them. But let's go to the back or go to page 23. If you need more room, make it page 23B uh, where it says hurricane stages. Okay. We did hurricane formation and I crossed off a bunch of stuff yesterday. So here are the hurricane stages. Um, and again, for my in-person students, ignore, uh, ignore the lines that I cross off. Uh, and then for my students online, uh, just try to write whatever's on there that I don't cross off. Okay. So we've got three stages. Okay. Again, this is our notes on page 23, guys. We're, we're going to finish 23 today. Last notes of the unit. We need to know, again, hurricane formation stages. That's important, right? Uh, the three of them are formative, mature, and dissipation. Okay? So this, all of this is good to go. You have, it's like the baby stage of a hurricane. It's forming, formative, right? Tropical depression. It's going to circulate. The fronts are going to form, right? And I'm even going to say, oh, we'll, leave it, we'll leave that there. We'll leave that there. Okay. Uh, mature. And guys, we're not going to write a lot today, so I'm probably just going to keep all this for today. Uh, mature, okay. This is where the eye forms. Very important. Very important, okay. The, again, the storm builds and the eye forms. Don't forget the eye is not the bad part of the storm. The eye is the calm part of the storm. It's calm and clear skies. The eye is calm. The eye wall, as Angel said earlier, it is going to be the worst part, Okay. And that's just outside of the eye, okay? So the eye wall is going to be the worst part. I'm going to cross this off. Hall band of strong winds. Um, I'm just going to say strong winds. Or, um, and then I'm going to add um, worst. This is the worst part of the storm. Okay. Let's see how bad my handwriting is here. Okay. So, worst part of the storm is the eye wall. Okay, the eye wall. And then don't forget, I'm also going to include strong winds there. Okay. So, worst part of the storm is eye wall. Uh, it's the worst. And then dissipation is when it breaks up and disappears. Usually, what's going to kill a hurricane, it's going to be the cold water. Cold water is going to make it die out or the um, land. Land makes it die out a lot as well. So let's go before I show you the diagram. Let's take a look at the inside of the, uh, eye, the eye of the hurricane from a plane's perspective. The plane starts out in the worst part of the eye wall. Then it goes to the, the nicest part, which is the eye. Pretty cool and amazing uh, film, uh, film here, as you'll see in a second. One moment. So here we're in the eye wall. The first part of the city. You see all the water and wind? And then it starts to get in the eye and it clears up. Right. Here again, here's the eye wall. Horrible wind, horrible rain. And then let's take a look at what the eye looks like. Clear skies, sunny, beautiful. But again, surrounding that is the worst part of the storm. And we're going to see a front view here in a second. Okay, so there's the front view from the pilot's perspective. Really beautiful, really beautiful, guys. And Angel, if you can see here, what's this, what's this large mass of clouds there? That's the what? That's the eye wall, guys. Here's the massive eye wall, the worst part. And now we're inside the eye. Nice, calm, and clear. The eye is safe. 
but only temporarily safe because the worst part's right after the eye. So we can see a, a big difference there, right? There's space up there, pretty cool, inside the eye. And again, this is what inside the eye wall is like. So th there's the eye, here's the eye wall. Big difference there, big difference, right? Okay, moving on to the last thing I think I want us to kind of write today is this diagram, okay? So go ahead, take a picture of that and label it as such. You will need all of that. And one thing I would like to add as well to this is that um, the top of the hurricane is different from the bottom of the hurricane. Okay, so the top of the hurricane is going to be high pressure. Okay, the bottom of the hurricane is going to be low pressure. You might want to add that. Okay, so that's why the top looks um, very flat and nice, and it's very... Uh, you know, nice and calm up top. But um, below that is where all the storms are at. It's very humid, warm. All the rain is below, right? So low pressure is down here. Uh, and above the hurricane, it's high pressure where it's cool and dry and calm, right? Don't forget, we have the eye in the middle, the eye wall around that, which is the worst part. And then the rain band surrounding that completely. Rain band surrounding that. Any questions? Questions? We're all good? Okay. Really quick before we call it... Oh. You know, I totally forgot we had a questions. So have your um, chat ready to answer your questions, guys. And my, for my in-person students, have your cards ready. This question should hopefully be easy. We got two to do. It's from our notes from yesterday. We'll do two questions, guys. Two questions. Hold on. Here's our first question for today. Oh, one second, it's loading. Is it reading my question? Three, two, one. Nope, not reading it. Let me try again. One second. All right. So here's our question, guys. Again, do your best because it could be on the test uh, Friday and Monday. Uh, tropical events in the Indian Ocean are called blank, and events in the Pacific Ocean are called blank. Is it A, typhoons, hurricanes? B, typhoons, cyclones, C, cyclones, typhoons, or D, cyclones, hurricanes. Look at the your notes on page 23 and give me your answer in the chat. Please answer in the chat for participation. All right. And let's see, for those in the chat, I need Jobed, Lakia, Sanaya, Tatiana, Yorkies, Irina, Diego, um, Daniela, Amira, Joseph. Please answer in the chat. What do you think it is? All right. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Diego. So now, again, practice makes perfect, guys. See what you got. See what you got. Thank you, Sanaya. Lakia, great. Thank you. Again, Yorkies, thank you. Jobed, have you answered yet? Jobed? Okay, about 10 seconds. I still need a few people. Thank you, Irina. Again, the uh, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Okay, the answer is going to be, guys, um, uh, just to give shout-outs to, let's see, Irina, Lakia, Sanaya. Shout-out to you guys. When one's get it right, it's going to be C, cyclones are for the Indian Ocean. Typhoons are for the Pacific Ocean. Her they're the same as hurricanes. They're just in different oceans. The same as hurricanes, just different oceans. Okay, moving on to our, our last few videos. I want to talk about hurricane safety really quick. Um, so uh, below the go blue, just write down hurricane safety and then bullet down a few ideas. Uh, again, I feel like it'd be a disservice to you guys for – because we live in Florida and we're learning about hurricanes, we've got to talk about hurricane safety before we call it a day here in the next five or, or so minutes. So 
Um, I'm going to show you a quick video clip from uh, when people were preparing for the hurricane in Florida. And then uh, we'll look at how we need to prepare and be ready for one when it approaches. Angel, just so we're clear, when there is a hurricane uh, uh, on its way, what are some things we need to do to our living space or our living area to maybe, maybe board up the windows? Any other things that we might need to have in our in our um, sandbags, maybe? Okay, so let's see a quick video that's going to show the uh, Florida uh, reaction. This is when Hurricane Irma was uh, in the um, Category 5 stage out in the ocean. Nobody knew what would happen. And then we'll see, again, how you should prepare when this is a situation. So, again, people kind of uh, – stores running empty on water, gas places, gas stations running empty. Just preparing for another storm when it does when it does happen here in Florida. Chose to stay behind. Hurricane Irma's impending arrival creating chaos. Attention, please. Right now, we are currently out of drinking water. As Florida residents scramble for basic necessities, crowds lined up ten deep outside this Publix hours before it opened its doors. Someone on a street corner trying to sell generators that normally would sell for around $250 for $1,000. The state attorney's general warning potential price gougers that the courtrooms may be closed, but the jails will remain open. Overnight gas lines stretching miles. I'm very nervous. I've been driving around for 30 minutes and my car was on E for like the past hour. Some drivers waiting for hours only to find out there is no gas. That's just scary. What could happen? We can rebuild your home, not your life. As Miami residents board up home and business and officials issue mandatory evacuations for low-lying areas, law enforcement is urging residents to get out now because Interstate 95 already a parking lot. At the Miami International Airport, a mass exodus, and for many, the destination doesn't matter. So you drove to the airport hoping you could get a ticket here at the ticket yeah. counter. What, what did they tell you? They just told me that all the flights are full and they don't have flights for today anymore. American Airlines announcing its last flight out of Miami will be at 349 Friday to Dallas-Fort Worth. All right, so uh, uh, a massive reaction among us here in Florida for this. And again, let's figure out if we do happen to stay, uh, what we need to do to make sure we're safe and prepared. So let's go check this one out as well. Again, make sure to bullet down a few ideas but below the go blue. Uh, this could be a question we see in the future coming up. Let's check it out. Three, two, one, three, two, one. This making large areas impossible to live in for weeks or even months. How should you get ready for a hurricane? Meteorologists still find it hard to predict hurricanes precisely. The good news is that since they move slowly, you'll definitely know a hurricane is approaching. Make sure your family has an emergency evacuation route. Discuss a meeting place so you won't panic if you get separated from each other. Also, make your house more like a fortress. Get storm shutters, make sure the garage doors are secure, and buy a generator to guarantee you'll have your own electricity in case of an outage. And most importantly, prepare an emergency bag for each family member. Materials in it should last you at least three days. Those things include one gallon of drinking water, non-perishable foods, and a can opener. Be sure it also has self-powered radios and flashlights, batteries, a whistle, and pliers to turn off the utilities. Finally, don't forget to throw in a first aid kit and dust masks. How to survive the storm If the authorities tell you to evacuate, don't try to be a hero. Just get out. Before you leave your home, make sure you turn off the gas and water to avoid leaks and flooding. Unplug all gadgets, including TVs and computers. If you have time, move things that are near and dear to you to a higher floor or put them on higher shelves to protect them from water. Fill your gas tank, pack your emergency bags, IDs, and a change of clothes. Then hit the road jack and don't look back. Normally, that would mean going north of the storm or inland in case you're on the coast. What if you decide to stay? If for some reason you choose to stay in the storm area, it's crucial that you find a sturdy shelter for yourself, your family, and your pets. There are community shelters in hurricane-prone areas like Florida. These places can help keep you safe during the storm. If you decide to make your own home your shelter, 
pick a room that has no windows or skylights. One of the biggest threats during a hurricane is flying debris, and it can easily come crashing through the window. You should close all windows and doors, and stay as far from them as you can, especially glass ones. A closet or bathroom can be good hiding spots for that reason. Another option is to hide under a sturdy table. You have to get into your shelter at least two hours before the hurricane is there. Stay inside even when it sounds like it's safe outside. When it comes to hurricanes, the weather can change for the worse before you know it. Water and lightning put together are a pretty risky combination. So turn off your main breaker and unplug major appliances. And by no means should you use them during the storm. As you're moving into your shelter spot, grab your emergency kit. There should be a self-powered radio in it, remember? You'll need it to monitor updates on the weather. When it gets dark, and it will, don't use candles that can set the place on fire. Instead, use flashlights that run on batteries. Using a telephone is highly unrecommended too. You have only one excuse to do it, and that's to call 911 if someone is injured or in life-threatening danger. But remember, if you're in a hurricane, there's a high probability that emergency services will be unable to get to you until after the storm moves away. Unless your house gets flooded, stay inside as long as possible. If flying debris can break through your windows, it can definitely come flying at you. The only reason to leave your house during the storm could be to evacuate to your neighbor's house or shelter when your home gets damaged. The emergency services might instruct you to do so as well. All right. So we're going to go ahead and call, uh, finish up with that. Um, real quick, again, um, what are some essential items that we're mentioning in the video? Yeah, if, if power goes out, flashlight, what do you need? What else do you need if, if power goes out? Generator, your own generator, flashlights. What do you need to do to your, uh, to, uh, we talked about boarding up windows already. Um, what kind of food? Canned, non perishable foods like peanut butter. Um, canned foods, things like that. Um, how many days worth of materials should you have? Like if you're going to survive in, in stuck in your house, how many days should you be ready to survive in the house? We're going to say three days. Have three days of materials ready. Also, what else should you have to, to, to stay hydrated? Water. Have a lot of water because that water goes out. That's going to cause problems. Okay. Um, let's do our last question of the day before I answer questions. Again, please answer this up for participation. That ties into our grade at the end of the quarter, which ends in a month. One second. So we are officially done with this unit, guys. Again, if we, if we were listening earlier, you should be able to get this question answered correctly, no problem. All right, last question of the day. At which stage do hurricanes form an eye? At which stage do hurricanes form an eye? Is it the formative stage, the mature stage, the latent stage, or dissipating stage? This was in our stages notes earlier. At which stage do they form an eye? See what you guys got? Got? Add it in the chat. Add it in the chat. All right, good job. And again, I need Joseph, Amira, Daniela, Diego, Irina, Jobed, Lakia, Sanaya, Tatiana, Yorkies. So far, I've gotten um, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. At which stage do hurricanes form an eye? Okay. Thank you, Sanaya. Lakia, thank you. I probably should have mentioned this more earlier. I think I didn't mention this as much as I should have. Still need more people, need more people. Participation, guys, 10 seconds. Irina, thank you. Good guesses. Oh, okay, good job, Diego. Irina, great. Got the right answer now. Okay, so let's go ahead and check in on this, guys. The answer is actually going to be letter B, letter B. So good job, you got that. The mature stage is where we form an I. Not the formative. The formative does not have an I yet. All right. Uh, just as a reminder, again, don't log off yet. I've got to go ahead and take attendance again. Just as a reminder, um, we've got 
the notebook check due into this week. We've got our uh, review day tomorrow. Our first part, part one of our test is going to be on Friday. Part two is on Monday. Okay. And uh, you got any missing assignments, make sure to turn those in. The scripts, the maps, don't fall behind. The quarter ends in one month when spring break happens. So don't fall behind. Let me go ahead and double check my attendance.